videos about where to get an Amiga nowadays. Back in the 90s, you would have been able to buy them from retailers. There would have been companies like iTech out there. There would have been lots of places that old Amiga users would have known. And now there's so many different places you can get one. There's so many different types of Amiga you can get. You can get emulators, hardware emulation. You can get old classic Amigas, you can get new next generation Amigas. So this is to explain to the total noob, the total Amiga newbie or someone who's not been on it for many, many years, where to buy an Amiga, what they'll basically do, and kind of the price range. And this is only going to be about Amigas that are available now. So this is Sunday the 6th of May 2012 that I'm doing it. On, and these are the Amigas that you can buy at the moment. So this YouTube video is inspired by another YouTube user called TechGuru UK, and he's done a video entitled "Why Use the Amiga in 2011." I think he also did one in 2009, and this video has proved really popular because it's just literally explaining why I use it. And I thought, well, it's great that these people now know why to, why to use it, the good points behind it, but where can they actually buy them and how much do they cost and what's available? Now we had a big period with Amiga where nothing happened and thank God we're out of that period because people are still making machines and they're commercially available which is crazy because no other platform from back then would have such a kind of dedication these days without really commercial backing for a long time. So um, our market's still there and they're still selling machines and you can still run a lot of the old software on them. So here's going to be my list and I'm going to break it down into a few categories because there's a lot to talk about here. The categories that I've split it up into are the following. Classic Amiga, Next Generation Amiga, Hardware Emulation slash FPGA and Software Emulation. Okay, so the first one we're going to go for is Classic Amiga. Now these are the old Amigas like 1200, the Amiga 500, the Amiga 4000, 4000T, 4, CD32. All of these kind of ones based on the Motorola 68K processor. These are available still. It's crazy, but they are. Um, some places have them, some don't. This is called uh, New Old Stock, I think that's the name. Uh, and it's basically stuff that's been in, unsold in the past, that's still packaged, that's just like the original, but it's been stored in a warehouse and it just hasn't been sold. So I know AmigaKit.com had some 1200s. As of this day, I think they're currently sold out. Um, those were Amiga Magic Packs, I think. And then Software Hut, which is another website, they had Amiga 4000 Ts and they were packaged brand new. Um, I know a guy called Max Society um, bought one recently because he did a good video on it. I'm not sure if they're still available but they might be. You might have to contact Software Hut. I'll put links to all these places down below. Um, also there was crazily uh, when they went to sell the Amiga CD32s they weren't allowed to have them in America because of patent issues so they ended up getting shipped to a factory in the Philippines and just kind of left that and there happened to be all these crates of brand new packaged Amiga CD32s in the Philippines um, these have started appearing on eBay I think other companies have bought certain crates maybe Analogic Computers had a few at some time I'm not sure but these are around and they're brand new sealed packaged Amiga CD32 so check them out because they're really interesting but um, regarding buying classic Amiga systems those are really your only options um, hardware add-ons upgrades are still being made to this day they're still being produced um, the Indivision Mark II 1200 which is an amazing scan doubler and Flicker Fixer um, has just recently been made. A lot of upgrades are still going on. There's great stuff like the Zoram, which is a Zorro card for the Amiga 4000. So if you're interested in getting your old classic and upgrading it, then 
yeah, you can do it with a lot of modern technology and make it, you know, USB compatible, all of this kind of stuff. But um, if you're looking for a brand spanking new machine, sealed everything, it's going to be a hard push unless these retailers have them in stock as new old stock. Okay, so we'll move on to the next category. Now, this category is where it gets a lot more interesting because there's a lot more available and it's all fresh and it's all new, which is um, great for the Amiga world. Okay, so the second category is next generation Amigas and I'm going to split this into two sections because um, a lot's changed in the Amiga world and there's many varieties of the operating systems, uh, Amiga based operating systems. There's the Amiga OS which is developed by Hyperion Entertainment and that is basically they have the branding for the Boeing Ball, they have the name Amiga One, so we'll call those the Amiga One range of computers and they are currently available. But we also have Morphos which is a effort that was set up in the 90s when they kind of thought Amiga was going nowhere, there was no kind of development going on and stuff had got stagnant so they decided to create their own Amiga-like compatible operating system and um, get it working on systems. So first we'll go for the Amiga, um, Amiga 1 range of computers. Now let me have a little look. The first one that we've got available is called the Sam 460EX and um, I've seen this motherboard, this is a follow one from the Sam 440 which was the previous one they introduced, it's around £700 at the moment, £750 and um, that includes the operating system OS 4.1, let me just check, yeah and uh, it's quite a good board, I've heard it's not that powerful but it's got you know PCI boards, it's got um, it's ATX form so it can fit in many kind of different cases it's uh, it's not as sharp and fast but um, you can get it up to 1.15 gigahertz which is quite fast but uh, I'm not really that experienced with the next generation operating system so I don't know how it affects it this is merely based on what I've heard from people's reviews um, it looks good. You can run a lot of the old software in it using UAE, which is a universal Amiga emulator, and that means it, it's kind of backwards compatible, which is really good. So you can run, you know, Ultimate Sound Studio on it, and you can also run a modern web browser. And this is a base of all the Amiga um, kind of Amiga One range. Now this is the lower end of the Amiga one, so this is the kind of entry level price that they're trying to go for uh, for Amiga users. Um, it's still quite expensive, but with these things, you know, if you're making a custom and you've got a small kind of audience, then you know stuff's going to become more expensive. If you've got worldwide thousands and thousands of people, then it's going to get cheaper because you're going to be able to make more in bulk. Um, but that's available at the moment at AmigaKit.com and I also think it's available at A-Cube uh, because this is the manufacturer of the board's A-Cube systems and the operating system is by Hyperion. So you've got the low end one there. Now we've got coming up the high end Amiga. Now this has just come out and um, I think the first batch of them literally sold straight away. and. Um, they're now doing one. What are they saying here? They're saying they're commencing production of a second batch as of the 10th of March 2012 and will be accepting pre-orders in due course. Uh, it's on a first come first serve basis. Now this is the complete, this is going to be the mother of um, the mother of kind of new Amigas uh, of the Amiga 1 range. This is dual core 1.8 gigahertz and it's um, got an XORO slot which is specifically made for this system it's got a lot of custom made stuff the whole board's custom made it's um, it's 
it's a piece of art. It's a very, very expensive. Um, but you know, if you're a real Amiga head, it's worth it. And it's got such room for expandability and stuff. You, you can have, I think it's got lots of PCI slots. It's got, um, you know, HD audio. It's got this XMOS chip, which is a kind of a programmable core that you can add on. So if you have like industrial hardware that you want to, you know, control a robotic arm with, you want to set a kind of a video display on LCD screens, you can control these cores using the Amiga One. I'm not sure how that works yet, but it's got some really kind of good ideas about getting into the industry and stuff. Um, as with this, development is always slower slower than the usual kind of fast development cycles that you get with other companies but this is a major step because this is a complete Amiga custom board it's not like the SAM which is an industrial board kind of modified to work with the Amiga operating system this was built just for it and um, it's very nice it's all branded it's got a ball on the case a boing ball on it it's got the branded keyboard mouse a complete package it's a very nice new Amiga and um, that's also got the Janus UAE which is the kind of backwards compatibility so that you can run all the old software and you can kind of um, still run your old stuff alongside this super fast new system with you know 3D modeling applications lots of stuff that you can do for the industry and I think they're gonna get a few people that work with the XMOS chips that aren't necessarily Amiga people that will be buying this system to have a computer that's with it. I'm not sure what their business plan is, but um, what they've produced, I really want one so far, so I'd recommend that. With the SAM 440, we also have it branded in a, a case called the Amiga 1 500. So this is their attempt of kind of l lowering the range and showing that it's the 500 and then you have the X1000 later which is a more powerful machine so it can come as a complete kind of package but initially it was sold as just a motherboard now um, let's get to the other side uh, of the new generation Amigas which is Morphos now Morphos is a great system but it's kind of it's a lot on the cheaper range and um, the Ethica board uh, was out quite a few years ago. This is only 400 megahertz. It's a PPC board and it works with Morphos. And um, it's only $99. You can buy that from Directron. And that's pretty cheap for a new generation Amiga. If you get the license in, I think it's around $100 for the license as well. So that makes about 200 But still, compare that, that's even, you know, third of the price of the uh, SAM 460 so that's a very viable option for getting into the modern Amiga world and you can a lot of programs are kind of work on Morphos, work on OS4 as well and they compile them for the different operating systems for the new software so it's a very good option also one thing that they've introduced with um, Morphos is that you can run it on the old PowerPC Macintoshes. Um, I personally have one, which is a Power Mac, which is the big Mac Tower, and um, yeah, you can run the operating system on that fine. Uh, you can get a Mac Mini and get quite fast Mac Minis and run it on that. So you know, you you can use your old hardware to get a next generation Amiga with more fuss. So that's my section on next generation Amiga. So now I'm going to talk about my next category, which is FPGA, and um, that's hardware emulation. So FPGA is fully programmable graphics array, and it's basically chips, and you you can tell the chips on the board and the kind of core to be what it wants to be. So you could have a Spectrum core on there, an Atari core, or anything. But it also means you can emulate it in a kind of in a hardware way so it's not just emulating within the software which means it's much quicker and it's much more compatible so the Minimig um, 
was created by a guy called Dennis and um, he created it himself and then I think AQ took the idea on or something and it kind of became a commercial product. But what it is, it's basically an Amiga reprogrammed onto a board the size of a CD case and it's got a lot of extra features so you can have um, a VGA coming out of there, it's got a compact flash card that you can add on, uh, I think you can update the core, change cores and stuff. Um, you can boot off hard drive if you have a little controller called an ARM controller and this is really cool because uh, it means if you just want to get a classic system straight away and use it this is really good for gaming for all this kind of stuff and there's a it's very compatible I think um, the price at the moment is I'm looking and it says 143 euros and that's on the A-Cube site I don't know if anyone else has it in stock they don't seem to at the moment but Maybe that's a good sign that it's actually selling. Um, they look really good. I'd like to have one myself. And uh, there's a few other things developing in the FPGA world. Uh, there's another machine. Oh, I can't find anything about it. It's um, a retro gaming machine. And I think you can switch between Amiga and the other kind of systems. But I don't think it's as developed as Mini Amiga. I can't remember the name. I'm really sorry, guys. I might mention it. In the notes at the bottom or something, but um, another Amiga that they're making is called the FPGA Arcade, which um, isn't available at the moment. So I'm not going to say you could buy it, but um, <laughs> if you check out the kind of websites and uh, I'll put links at the bottom, then it should be available soon. This is an upgraded version of the Mini Mig. Um, Actually, it's a total different machine. Um, it's made by someone else. It's kind of on the FBGA idea, but that's the only same thing with it. It's uh, aimed to kind of upgrade it and to get it better. Uh, it comes with an Ethernet jack. It comes with kind of, you know, VGA still. Um, it comes with lots of different options, but I think it also comes with hardware support. It does AGA, which um, Amiga Graphics. Amiga advanced graphics architecture rather than ETS so it's the first FPGA to handle AGA I think um, yeah don't quote me on this but <laughs> okay and that should be available soon um, I'll give you the web address down below now that's hardware emulation let me go on to the last category that we're going to have. So, as you can see, there's a lot of Amigas out there, and uh, you're spoiled for choice at the moment, guys, really. So, all these people that were thinking years ago, oh man, I'm waiting for the new Amiga. Well, they're here. There's lots here, so go ahead and pick one. Next, I'm going to do software emulation. So, if you guys know of UAE, which is Universal Amiga Emulator, things have moved on. From there a lot um, you can still get UAE and there's a lot of packages still produced it's a really good package but one thing that's happened now is um, it's called AROS and basically AROS was set up as a free operating system a free alternative to the Amiga that even implemented the kickstarts free and was fully compatible with the old Amiga software but ran on x86 hardware so on PCs on Intel chips on AMD chips this kind of stuff so um, this is now moved on that uh, people want to have dedicated machines just for software emulation and uh, these machines are available and with AROS they're quite impressive so you can dual boot that and you can kind of run it I know it's not a true Amiga but it's running the Amiga like system and if you prefer to be in between the Amiga and the PC this might be your best option you can also build these yourself even AROS is free you can do it on your own um, kind of uh, own setup at home but um, these setups you can just buy that are completely packaged now the first ones from Cluster Software Limited and uh, Cluster UK and that's where Steve Jones, who's a long-time Amiga guy, and he's done some great stuff. I remember he uh, he mixed Amiga and PC with the Siamese system years ago, and uh, 
he's really got into AROS and he's kind of helping drive it at the moment. And the system he's got at the moment is called Icarus. And um, it's not called Icarus, it's called the Omeka. I'm very sorry, Steve. Uh, Icarus is another name for AROS, the operating system. Uh, the Omeka is a little machine, completely fanless, completely quiet. Um, has all your Amiga stuff, you can get it for £200, it's uh, got a really nice graphics card in there, lots of stuff that I don't know because I'm not that big on the kind of PC scene, but it supports the Radeons, it's got um, a lot of memory and uh, it's quite small, so this is a good system, if you want to check that out, check out Cluster UK, uh, you might even want that just for you know PC gaming or anything or even just to have a you know media box with a media center on it under your TV or something uh, that you can just switch to AROS. And another company doing this are Ares. Um, they built the Ares One, uh, which is um, another kind of system that's built around emulation. It looks a bit bigger than the iMeka, has CD-ROM options and. Uh, so I think it's got higher graphics and kind of CPU, but uh, the price reflects that. Um, it's a good system. They had their own kind of um, operating system they were developing it for, for, called AROS Broadway, but um, I think they've dropped that recently just to kind of develop uh, AROS. Um, it's, it's a good system, yeah. What do they have on it? It comes with 500 gig hard drive, you know. Um, Amiga sent a media center license so you can run all your videos, you can watch streaming internet TV on it and everything, and you can run the old stuff because um, AROS is pretty compatible. As with these things, um, and as with Amiga, you always tend to get a few bad apples, and um, we have Commodore USA that are one. Um, I wouldn't trust these guys with any of my details or even delivering the products. Um, all they've done is simply rebrand a few Amiga machines and kind of claim that they're relaunching it. Um, they're claiming ownership over the trademark. I don't know how. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of confusion and these guys aren't helping it. And they're also not helping the Amiga community. They're not furthering developments. They're uh, just simply reskinning a Linux distro. So um, stay well clear from Commodore USA, guys. These are your Amiga options. and. As you can see, there's a lot of systems out there, guys. So uh, I'll probably do another one of these videos soon and kind of update you again on what's available. Maybe do one on software or do one on kind of graphics cards or something. But um, if you ha if I've missed anything, if you have any replies, please say. And big shout out to Danwood, Cluster UK, all these people I mentioned in this who are still supporting the Amiga and. Um, Xeon as well, Eon. Um, big shout out to Sinstick.com as well, which is a really good gaming community that I've been uh, playing on, that um, I've been pretty friendly to an old Amiga user, considering that they've all got PCs and Macs. Uh, they've been pretty accepting, so uh, check out that site as well, and um, I'll be back soon. Thanks guys for watching.